Hello and good evening from Ireland. I am Ali O'Shea. This is Neo. So I'm just going to wait for some people to come in the room before I get started. And I'm going to talk to you today about some law of attraction tips. So we're just going to wait for some people to come in the room. Hi, James. Hi, Paul. Hi, Helen and Michael and Rob Lee. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, Darcy and Leander and Michael. This is Neo. Neo's come to say hello. <laughs> Hi, Carl and Lightly Go. How is everybody doing? Let me know how you're doing today on this Sunday. And let me know where you're joining from. Okay, you want to get down here? And he's gone. Hey, Deb. Hello, Rob Lee. Hi, Connie. Hi, Darcy. Hey, James. Thank you for sharing, Paul. Hello, Joelle. Hi, Michael. Hello, Heather. Hi, Narelle. Margaret. That's Neo. Hello, Miriam. Darcy is in Green, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So far, so good, says Rob Lee. James is in South Africa. Fantastic. Hi, Pat. Hello, Joelle. Hi, MG Millie. How are you? Can you all hear me okay? Deb is doing good. Fantastic. So, um, I'm just going to share very quickly before I get started. So just bear with me a moment. If you guys could share while I'm live, that would be fantastic. This will just take me a moment. And I'm going to talk to you about some more Law of Attraction tips. Um, thank you for the hearts, guys. Hello, Jimmy. Welcome. So welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you for sharing, Joelle. Hello, Dushyant. Hi, John. Michael's in the United States, New Jersey. Fantastic. MG Millie is in Lincolnshire, UK, just across the water. Thank you for sharing, Darcy. Thank you, Deb, for saying that you can hear. Hi, Emily. Hi, Wendy Lynn. So keep letting me know where you're joining from. Um, First off, I'd just like to mention, obviously most of you know that I'm going to Vegas in July and hosting a workshop there with Tony Doyle. And um, it's been brought to our attention by a couple of people that the buttons on Tony's side aren't working for the event. So we have extended the early bird past the 1st of April to the 8th of April inclusive. Um, and so um, apologies for that. Tony Doyle is, as we speak, at a Hay House event with loads of authors and Hay House people, so he can't get it fixed right now, but he will get it fixed as soon as possible. So the early bird for Las Vegas is now extended to the 8th of April, and our apologies that the button wasn't working, um, and your patience is greatly, greatly appreciated. So we are going to be in Vegas on the 20th of July in the Stratosphere Hotel, and you can book through Tony's website. Um, if you're going to book, just text me first or message me or Tony just to make sure the buttons are working in the next couple of days. I will post it when it's fixed. Hello, Nick and Pam and Sonia and Tanya. Um, who's feeling down? Somebody was feeling down. Thank you for sharing, Anna Maria. Peggy Sue's here in Denver. Thank you for sharing, MG. Hi, Maria and Thomas. Um, Darcy, sad. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, hopefully this will raise your vibrations. Hi, Kerry. How are you? And Maria shared. Thank you. She is in Kent. You know what? The other day I shared a post. Probably most of you have seen it with the unicorns going, shit, it was that today and they missed their boat. I had over 300 shares on that clip, on that little picture. 
Now, if you guys would all share my videos to the same extent, think how much further and wider they could reach the people whose lives we could touch by sharing the information that I'm putting out there. I put this information out there for free and anybody can join. So if you guys could all share, that means that somebody on your timeline, somebody in a group that you're in gets a chance to see what I'm talking about and hopefully raise their vibrations because after all it is my goal to raise the vibration of the planet one soul at a time. So guys don't let me down, I had over 300 shares on one of my posts, nearly 330 I think. You can share this video to your own timeline, loads of you are in lots of spiritual groups, there's no reason you can't share it. Um, Anna Marie, um, oh sorry to hear that Darcy. But you know what, as a healer I can tell you, and also one of my best friends is a spiritual medium, so I know that there is no debt, there is no ending. It's us here in the physical world that feel like we're missing them and we're missing their presence, but really you just need to tune into their energy. They're all around you. They're all around you. Look for signs, little robins in the garden, lots of different signs and synchronicities will come to you, probably in the shape of in the form of your dad he is still around you thank you for sharing rob lee yes really tanya over 300 shares victoria's on the new york subway wow cool um thank you for sharing pam and anna maria said she's feeling down her husband left you you know what again as a law of attraction practitioner and i know it's probably not a good time for you right now when somebody has just left you but it's really Abraham Hicks who obviously channels source energy um, talks about this and how we don't really miss anyone and if we do it's ourselves it's our connection to ourselves our higher soul our source our um, you know God the universe whatever you want to call it that we're missing that connection to that rather than that person so now would be the time to find yourself you've got the space and you've got the tools to do it you're on my live video so come follow me if you're not following me or friend me if you're not friends with me uh, there's so much information that I give out uh, to help people so thank you for sharing Peggy Sue and Marcy Anna and pa Pam says my mom and sis visit in the form of butterflies Exactly. There's signs and synchronicities that the universe and loved ones and angels send us all the time. And it's start to be aware of those things. Um, to start to be aware of those things, I should say. So, Anna Maria, definitely find yourself. Start to connect with your inner being um, and um, start to find yourself. It's a good time for you to find yourself. So I hope that helped. Thank you for sharing for all the unicorns, Rob Lee. Am I missing? Hi, Bernadette. Deb says, I always listen to Ali when I feel not as great as I want. And I always, always feel better. Thank you, Deb. Looking forward to our meeting on uh, Thursday. And um, Deb is one of my uh, Soul Expansion Academy members. She's also one of my tribe members. My Soul Expansion Academy opened last, or the 10th of this month. And inside of the Academy, I have the most amazing soul-inspired, soul-driven uh, programs. So uh, there's two programs in there right now. I will be adding to that as the year goes on. I expect to have um, at least 20, if not 24 programs inside of the Academy as the year goes on. And you can sign up for that. You can subscribe to that on my website, which is www.expansivesouls.com. Paul, can you put my website in the comments, please? Hi, Jayshree. Hi, Art. Tanya says, missing my mom today as it would have been her, her 57th birthday. And to add to the sadness, my guinea pig died this morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? Celebrate your mom's birthday here. She's still around you. Hello, Emily in Marietta, Ohio. Thomas says we have to connect with our true higher consciousness. Absolutely. And Carrie's missing her boy. Well, did you hear what I said? Connect to your inner being, Carrie. Hi, Claudia. Thank you, Paul. 
Hi, Pat and Sana. Welcome to you both. This is fantastic. There's so many of you here. Please keep sharing this live. If you haven't shared it, you've got no excuse. You just click the share button, share it to your timeline, share into groups. We need to get the messages out further and wider, guys. So for those of you who are wondering, Paul has been painting the bedroom all day and I managed to sleep in my bed last night. Taking the place apart to declutter and clean yesterday, I got this whim that the bedroom needed to be painted. So full force, Paul O'Shea has been painting. So I did sleep in my bed last night. So um, we've had a very busy few days. I had my wealth coaching last night and Alive and Tribe. And today I'm doing this as well. So I hope that for those of you who are new, just joining me, please feel free to either follow me or send me a friend request. I'm, I was at my limit. I had to get, I, I have a couple of spaces left now. Uh, but if, if I don't have a space, you can follow me. But we're going to talk today about some law of attraction tips. Um, and here we go. Okay, so for every goal that you have, and you should all have goals, ask yourself, what needs to change so that I have a stronger belief that this is possible? What has to change? So behind everything, behind no matter what we do, um, even when we're utilizing the law of attraction to our advantage, the, the law of attraction is always working. Whether you believe it, whether you understand it, it doesn't matter, it's always working. But we want to be deliberate creators rather than creating by default because we are all creating our own reality in every second of every moment of every day. Life is like a blank canvas and you are the artist creating that finished picture and what it will look like. And so things need to happen. We always need to take inspired action. We always need to take some form of action but generally, inspired action is the best action that you can take. And how do we get inspired action? We quiet our minds, we connect to our inner being, we connect to our soul, to our source, to our higher self, to God, the universe, whatever you like to call it. To me, it's all one and the same. And you connect. You connect on that higher level. You meditate. You quiet your mind every day. And then things will start to happen to you. You'll be given impulses to do things, to go here, to pick up the phone, to call that person at a specific time. And you might not even know. I always give the example of when I came home from America after seeing Abraham Hicks in August 2017, and I was posting on Instagram. And I was literally just posting holiday photos from America and letting my energy be out there. And I got discovered by Rumi Quotes. And I went on to write 13 blogs which were published by them. And so I personally feel that that was an inspired action. An inspired action. Another example might be that Tony Doyle, who watched my lives back in 2017, 2018, contacted me and told me he wanted to work with me. And I was like, who the heck are you? And now we're best friends and we're doing a gig in Vegas in July. I mean, all kinds. And so I believe that that was inspired action for Tony. Inspired action for Tony. Oh, Paul slept in the bed as well, Deb, of course. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia. Pam says, nice to have this nice break from work this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Pam. Lovely to see you. Hi, Eileen and Bruce. In the paint pot, Debs. Um, Darcy's in Connecticut in USA. And Jay Shri is in South Africa. Fantastic. How cool is that? Inspired action is definitely where it's at. Deb joined the Soul Academy two days early. Yes, she did. And Deb is loving the Soul Expansion Academy, so aren't you, Deb? So everybody who wants to join, the doors are still open. I don't know how long I'm going to keep those doors open for, but they are open at the moment, and you can subscribe on my website. Hi, Lizzie Paul. Uh, 
Carrie says, my daughter is watching you with me. Her, she's five. Her name is Dulcie. Hello, Dulcie. Lots of love to you. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday with your mom. Hi, Sharon. Pam says, I went to my hairdresser the other day and she was just telling me another client went, went on an Abraham Hicks cruise recently. Cool. Marciana says she's going to see me here. Where are you, Marciana? Are you in the States? Um, also, the retreat that I'm hosting here in Ireland with um, the wonderful Vivian Cardin uh, was booked out within six weeks. We've had to put an overflow of people in a hotel nearby. I did think that the hotel was completely booked out, but there was a mix up with the rooms. So there are two rooms left inside of the hotel that we're transporting people to and from. Uh, for the retreat that is in Carlingford in Ireland uh, from the 28th to the 30th of June so if you'd like more information go to my website www.expansivesouls.com or PM me of course hi Susan welcome to you there's another Academy member so if you guys can let them know what you think of the Academy so the people know uh, aside from my opinion of the Academy what you think about the Academy what you're getting from the academy so far we've only been in there for 14 days um, and in actual fact i have a healing meditation that needs to be re released inside of there uh, the first 50 members are founding members and they get all of my affirmations and meditations downloadable versions hi pat hi Ann. so Just make sure that you take action, guys. Make sure that you take action because without the action, nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's the same with vision boards. When you've got vision boards, of course, you still have to take action. My three vision boards resulted in a trip to LA and Vegas in 2017 and to see Abraham Hicks. Vision boards really, really, really work. And they activate the reticular activating system in your brain. However, you can't expect shit to fall off your vision board and into your lap. For us to go on that trip, we had to book the flights. They had, they had to be the right price. We had to book the kennels for the dogs. The kids had to be on holidays. We had to find the right places to stay, etc., etc. It's all about inspired action. We had to pick up the phone and book the flights. Joelle says, well worth joining the Soul Academy. Great programs there. Lovely Soul Tribe. Loving the scripting program at the moment. Thank you, Joelle. Deb says, love the Academy. Great programs and meditations. Thank you, Deb. Okay, so. The next one is, thank you for the heart. Be good to others every day and watch how that goodness comes back to you. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a big advocate for kindness. And I do, in fact, have a group with the wonderful John Bruff, who um, has dedicated a lot of his time to the homeless people in London. And that group is called Global Random Acts of Kindness on Facebook. And it's free for you to join. And it's like a beautiful kindness family. We call it the kindness family because everybody is just so kind and lovely in there hello jason stevenson good eye mate good morning to you in australia and deb has just said wealth coaching was fantastic thank you deb i am doing my wealth coaching again the first two saturdays in april uh from 5 p.m to 7 p.m gmt if anybody's interested in that i'm a qualified wealth coach i've just finished my first round of wealth coaching that was four weeks we did it in four weeks this time we're doing it in two weeks we're gonna compress it a little bit but it's still doable okay so be good to others every day and watch how that goodness comes back to you i teach about this on my workshops um you know random acts of kindness acts of kindness are so important paying it forward buying a coffee for the person behind you bringing a sandwich to the homeless person on the street um bringing clothes to homeless people whatever it might be opening a door for somebody even smiling at somebody you know what i really do think that the elderly people kind of get left out of society where they're walking on their own and because they're more elderly nobody says hello to them why not 
I think we should smile at everybody and say hello to everybody. And just remember, that might be the only smile or the only hello that they get that day. Kindness and generosity to others is of utmost importance. And it will come back to you in miraculous ways. Hello, Taryn from New Zealand. Uh, Pam says she loves global random acts of kindness. Hi, Amanda. Hope I haven't missed anyone. Hi, Billy. Welcome to you all. The next one is your happiness is under your control. Consider your accomplishments, your blessings, and choose to be happy. Every single day that you wake up, guys, every single day, you have a choice to open your eyes, be thankful that you were given another day, that you have breath in your lungs, that the sun came up this morning, and you know, you get to choose. You get to choose whether to be happy or whether to be in a bad mood. But you know what? As soon as you start to realize that your life is a gift that has been given to you, well then, you can start to see it from a different perspective. Hi, Amanda, under Jeffrey's, uh, Tanya says, Ali, can I have more information about your self-love workshop? Yes, my self-love workshop. I'll PM you maybe tomorrow, Tanya, because after this I have some other stuff on, but I'll PM you if that's okay. Thank you for your inquiry. Self-love is really the basis of everything, isn't it? Self-love is, to me, the basis of not only the law of attraction, but life itself, because if you don't have love for yourself, well, nothing else really matters. You need self-love to feel self-worth. You need self-love to feel self-confidence. And you need to be able to put that out into the world to attract other things to you that you're wanting to attract. Darcy says, so true. Deb says, kindness is free to give and is worth everything to the receiver. Absolutely. And it also raises our own vibration as well while we're doing it. Kerry says, so true, I'm a very kind person. I can't be around people that are heartless. Beautiful what you're saying. Thank you. So guys, free to join Global Random Acts of Kindness uh, on Facebook. Okay, we'd love to see all you lovely souls there. <coughs> so it's, it's your choice, basically, every day that you wake up to be happy. And, you know, nobody else can make you happy. Yes, as I said before, People can help to raise your vibrations. They can lift your energy. But nobody else is in charge of your happiness except for you. So it's a choice that you make every single day. Every single day. The next one is to live life your way. Live life your way. Not the way your friends, partners, colleagues, or parents told you you must. Your path, guys, is your path. You're the ones that are living your lives. Nobody else, not your parents, not your husband, not your wife, not your children, not your nieces, nephews, friends. You are the one who needs to do what you want to do and do it for you. Don't do it for anybody else. It's your path and it's your path alone. And when you're making your goals, writing your dreams, your wishes and your desires, make sure that you're doing it for you. It's like when people join a slimming club or a weight loss club or whatever you want to call it. People say, well, why are you doing that? Are you, do, are you doing that for me? Or boyfriends might say, are you doing that for me? Never do that. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because you want to lose weight. Do it because you want to feel healthy. Do it because you want to look good in your clothes. Do it because it's for you. The next one is, if your goals or your dreams don't fill you with an exciting charge, then they're not the right ones. Look for intentions that are charged and energized like a battery and work towards manifesting those. So when you're talking about your goals and your dreams, your wishes and your desires, you should be feeling animated. You should be feeling excited in your heart and in your tummy everywhere you should be feeling 
excitement. You should feel that it's going to be something so amazing. And if it's not, what's the point? The next one is a really, really important one. Thank you for all the hearts, everybody. And it is play every day. Play every day. And stay connected to the childlike part of you. Remember that children manifest their intentions better than most adults. Children manifest their intentions much better than most adults. And how do they do this? Children are like wonders. They just play, they use their imagination, and they manifest things through their intentions. So it's really important that we get in touch with that childlike part of ourselves so that we can sort of get to the level that children are at to be able to do these things easier. So make sure that you play every day, with it, whether it's by yourself, dancing to music around your sitting room or your living room like a crazy Egypt or hanging out with friends and playing board games or watching movies or going to the park and having a game of rounders or whatever it might be. Play, it's very important to have fun. Hi Michelle, welcome. Pam says, just joined the Soul Expansion Academy. Yay, so you're one of our founding members. Thank you, Michelle, or Pamela. Um, that's wonderful, I'm delighted to have you aboard. Mary is here, hello Mary, and um, Heather says you are amazing, thank you so much. I'm just me, uh, reflections of all of you. Hi Eileen. Deb says, uh, my family laughs that I find things funny like a 14 year old. We've got to keep that childlike fire burning inside of us. Hi Lisa, let me know where you're joining from guys. Um, Okay, so the next one is give your imagination a workout every day. Constantly using it to visualize new rich scenarios in which abundance is already yours. Which abundance and all the things that you want to manifest in your life, not just abundance. So give your imagination a workout every day. Rounders is, um, Pamela, where you... You've got a, I can't even remember how to play rounders. You've got a, a ball and a bat. It's, it's kind of like softball. You've got to hit it to a, whatever. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's been so long since I played it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like, what did you say? It's a bit like, Paul? What did you say it's like? Softball. Paul says it, in, in America, it's, it's like softball. But we used to play it as children. And we used to play hide and seek. Did you guys ever play tip the can? Tip the can, hide and seek. Um, yeah. Anyway, hope, hopefully that, that explains. Hi, Kaylee. She's in Brunswick, New Brunswick. And who is? Lisa's in Cumming, Cumming Georgia. Thank you, guys. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Baseball, is it like baseball, Jason? Do you have rounders, Jason? Did you play rounders as a kid? Hi, Keith, welcome. Oh, no, don't know rounders. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, that's what we called it. Okay, so visualization is really, really important. And as I said, visualization really works. As you know, I spoke about earlier how I manifested trips to LA and to Vegas and to see Abraham Hicks with my vision boards. But of course, always remember that you have to take inspired action. Things do not fall off your vision board into your lap. You must take inspired action. Okay, and I explained this at the beginning. Deb says, tip the cow where she grew up. Tip the cow. Is that tip the cow? Probably the same thing. Uh, Robley says, I love hide and seek. Do it with my employees every day. <laughs> well, in our bedroom yesterday, because our mattresses were off the bed, um, 
we've got like a six foot something bed and we've got two ma mattresses. So when they were off the bed and I was lying, I was sitting down on the floor doing something else. And Paul was painting over the other side. I was like lifting my head up going peep. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> Sounds so stupid. But it's about playing those fun games, just being silly and connecting with your your inner child. Helen says she used to love rounders. So maybe you can explain it better than me to people. God, it's so long ago since I played it. Um, all right. So give your imagination a workout every day. If you're feeling stuck, walk away, take a break, and come back to the problem. A new solution will often present itself at this stage. So if you're feeling stuck, walk away, take a break, or meditate. Um, meditation is a fantastic. Deb says, no people would actually tip cows over. <laughs> That's hilarious. Tanya says, the old skipping rope, I spying all these. I do it with my nephews every weekend. Brilliant. Yeah, I spy. Love that one on road trips. Um, skipping rope. We played the skipping rope all the time. Oh, my God. And elastics. Did you guys play elastics? Wow. Bringing back some serious memories here. Paul says, if Ali decides she wants more painting done next weekend, I'm going to play hide and seek and I'm going to win. <laughs> Yeah, the sitting room could do with a bit of a paint there. The ceiling really definitely could do with a paint. You, you brought that one on yourself. Uh, hi, Breed. Helen says it's similar to baseball. You hit the ball, then you have to run around four bases to make a rounder before the other team gets you out. Thank you, Helen. Jason says he loves I Spy. Deb says she naps. Okay, so if you don't know where to start when you're stuck, we're going to go through 14 challenges for 14 days of growth. 14 days of growth. Stick to it for two weeks and you will vibrate on a higher frequency, which will bring you closer to living your best life. Guys, if you have not shared this video, now is the time to share this video. Share it on your timeline. Share it in the groups you're in. Share, 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 share. As I said, I got over 300 shares on a unicorn clip on my page. So if you guys can share that, you can share my videos, no problem. It's really important to get these messages out there. Thank you so much for everyone who has already shared. Tipping cows is a New England thing, skipping rope. Um, Deb says, cats in the cradle, haven't heard of that one. There was another one called bulldog where you all charged at each other. Oh my God, this is so much fun. <laughs> Tanya says round is, is very much like baseball. Cool. Okay. So new habits don't simply develop overnight. However, with a little willpower and a commitment to making small, positive and manageable changes each day, you can make significant shifts in your happiness and your well-being. Hi, Noreen. Okay. So we're going to go with these 14 challenges and then I'm going to leave you. Okay, so it's going to take me a little while to get through these. And then we will come back for some more Law of Attraction tips that I'll have left um, another day. Okay. So the first one is to use words that encourage happiness. Use words that encourage happiness. Hi, Carol. The next time someone asks you how you are, don't say fine or okay. Instead, Tell someone how happy or excited you are about something that hap is happening or something that's inspiring gratitude. This will induce a better mood and spread joy to others too. So use words that encourage happiness. Kaylee says, well, we, I used to play jump the snake with the skipping rope. It's basically when you shake the rope like a snake and you have to jump over it. Yes. Anyone else play sevens with their ball? Where you bounce it against the wall and you had to put your leg up and you had lots of different things. The next one is to try one new thing every day. Try one new thing every day. Why? Well, first time experiences spark inspiration and curiosity so try to have one each day for the next 14 days try to have 
one new thing every day that you do. It can be something small like striking up a conversation with a stranger or sampling a different type of cuisine, but go big if you want. Visit a brand new place or start a new hobby or like me, I don't think, don't do things small. Um, make a change to your home. Sorry, Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, hmm? because he's a little bit behind because he's got his earphones in. Four square. What did you want to ask me about love, M. Stranger? What I can tell you about love is that it is one of the highest vibrations on the planet, along with appreciation. Hopscotch, yes, absolutely hopscotch. Hi, Jackie. Thank you, Kaylee. <laughs> Tanya says she's feeling older the more she remembers. You're not as old as me, Tanya. Elastics, yes, we did elastics. What about roller skating, guys? Did you used to do roller skating? My parents had a big garage and myself and my friend used to roller skate around the garage when it was empty and no cars in it. And we used to have like flashing lights for the disco. Deb says, I rode with my daughter today who is learning to drive. That was enough for today. Rob Lee, with elastics, we used to sing, or was it with the skipping rope? It was, it was something to do with politics back when we were kids. I won't even sing the song. Oh my goodness, you just brought back a memory. Hilarious. Okay, the next one is to dedicate an hour a day to one of your passions. Yeah, Jason used to roller skate. You can still roller skate, you know. Lots of people do it here down the promenade or the seafront in Bray. Hi, Adele. So uh, dedicate an hour a day to one of your passions. Everyone has busy lives, but you can make time for an hour um, to devote to a key hobby that you enjoy each day whether it's religion music sport or a particular field of study engage in something you truly care about and notice how much meaning it adds to your life we all need to have something that we're passionate about whether it's writing knitting crocheting roller skating elastic skipping rope dancing music reading a book um, connecting spiritually to something joining my academy um, doing one of my workshops um, watching some comedy on the TV having an Epsom salts bath uh, going and getting a facial or if you're Jason Stevenson going in a float tank for an hour to escape the world do something that you really love to do, that you enjoy to do each and every day. Something that you're passionate about. Spending time with your animal, taking it for a walk if you have a dog. Uh, please don't take your cats for a walk or your guinea pigs or, or other animals that shouldn't be taken for walks. But you get the general idea. Do something that you're passionate about for an hour each day. You know, we could all procrastinate and say, I don't have time, I don't have time. But then how much time do we actually spend on Facebook? Scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. We can get off Facebook and we can go outside. We can connect with nature. We could go for a swim. We could go for a run. We could go for a walk. We can do lots of things. Hi, Sharon. Susan says she loves bike riding. Helen says, learning a language, brilliant, well done. Thank you for sharing, Jason. Hi, Nell. Hi, Angel, welcome to you. So guys, if you're just joining me, these are things to do if you're feeling stuck. Um, and this is 14 challenges for 14 days of growth. And we are up to number four now. And again, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier which is to treat everyone nicely. It's basically random acts of kindness, doing it on a daily basis, smiling at a stranger, buying lunch for somebody in the queue behind, buying a coffee, opening the door to somebody, saying hello to somebody, um, whatever it might be, giving stuff to the homeless, giving stuff to a charity that you are passionate about, uh, going and helping a neighbor mow their lawn that maybe can't, going and offering to help somebody who's sick, maybe do their shopping for them, whatever it might be. Be nice to even those you dislike. Uh, I had an encounter in the supermarket today. One of my friends is going through a bit of a nasty divorce and I met their husband in the supermarket. And 
I've had a couple of encounters like this before with a couple of my friends who've been through divorces, but I refuse to be rude to the husband because I like to keep the peace and I think it's nice to be nice even if you dislike those people, which I really do dislike these particular people. I, I will not use the word hate because I think hate should not be part of our vocabulary, but for what they have done, of course there is two sides to every story, but being the friend on the other side, I, anyway, so I had to be nice to somebody today who I really dislike. Um, show respect and kindness, compassion to all you can encounter, not because they're nice people, but because you are, because you are, because you want, you don't want to come down to their level, as people say, you don't want to stoop as low as they are. You know what? And he was polite to me today. He's never been rude to me. So it's about remembering these little things, you know. The next thing, absolutely going to love this, guys, because what did, what did I embark on the other day? Decluttering. And I teach about decluttering, how it opens up the law of vacuum. And it lets other things manifest in your life. Money, relationships, uh, all kinds of things. It opens up the law of vacuum. Okay, so I started, uh, I started small because I'm a firm believer in baby steps. I started small on Friday, I believe it was, when I was on the phone to Joelle Keane. I was clearing out one of my drawers. Well, that led into not just clearing out one of my drawers. It led into clearing the entire sitting room from the bedroom. I came to the sitting room, and myself and Paul spent three hours here. Then it went from the sitting room yesterday to the bedroom. So the whole bedroom got taken apart and now Paul is painting it and everything is still everywhere. But so much crap has been thrown out so far. And once the place starts to get back, put back together, I know so much more stuff will be either thrown out, recycled, adding to the value of the cycle of life of that product. Whether it be clothes that we don't wear anymore, that are in good condition, that we can donate to charity. Whether it be shoes that we've worn once that you can donate to charity. Whatever it might be, whether it's an electrical item that you've bought and you've never used, it's sat in your kitchen cupboard. Give it to charity or give it to somebody who you know will get value from it. So we're all surrounded by clutter. So challenge yourself each day to get rid of something that you no longer need. Challenge yourself to get rid of something each day that you no longer need. Pam says, take an elderly neighbor to a doctor's appointment. Brilliant. Thank you, Nell. Yay, decluttering. Kaylee says, what can you tell me briefly about twin flips? I'm not gonna get into that right now. I'm sorry, Kaylee. Um, Helen says, oh, been doing something some big today a big lift jason says i need to declutter every second day yes helen says they are your mirror soul they come into your life to enable you to become the highest version of you you know what i don't really talk about twin flames to be honest with you because there's twin flames and there's soulmates and everybody gets so hung up on them i believe you're going to meet whoever you're going to meet and i I don't really know if i buy into the whole thing of it all i believe in soulmates but the whole twin flame thing I'm not really sure that I buy into it, if I'm totally honest with you. So that's why I won't go there. Pam says, I really need to declutter. My church is having a rummage sale. We'll donate a bunch of clothes. Deb says, Ali caused me to declutter two drawers yesterday. <laughs> that's good. I also uh, encouraged one of my other friends, who probably won't put her hand up right now, but she started decluttering too. I don't know. Maybe she will. Joelle, you can come over and finish the bedroom tomorrow while Paul's at work. What a fantastic idea. He'll be delighted. Thanks very much for the offer. Um, Daniel says, oh, I'm still working on my badge. I'm still not finished. It's becoming a big project now. Paul says he's washing his hair that day. It's okay. Joelle's offered to do it, Paul. Really important point, Helen Louise Adams just brought up. Okay. I teach about decluttering on my workshops. Found some of my ex's stuff in the house today in the bin. I went, perfect. If you've got jewellery, photos, memorabilia from an ex, get rid of it. Everything is energy, guys. And items, even materialistic possessions, they carry energy. Even photographs, they carry energy. Why are you holding on to them? 
Dr. Red. No problem, Kaylee. Sorry, don't mean to be so blunt about it, but I just, uh, I, I just have a, a sort of a thing about it. I, I do believe in soulmates, and I'm married to my soulmate. I've been with my soulmate for 27, or is it 28 years this year? Um, married for 19. Michael has to declutter. Yes, guys, you're opening up the energy. You're opening up the law of vacuum to manifest new stuff in. We'll have you know I'm pretty handy with a paintbrush, says Joelle. That's brilliant, Joelle. Okay, so Paul's telling me that the second coat is done. I reckon it might need a third. So you can come over tomorrow, no problem. Hi, Linda, welcome to you. Okay, so where are we? Okay, get rid of one thing per day. Guys, it even means your email. Decluttering your email. Decluttering your friends list if you've got negative people on there. Um, you might feel resistant at first, but you will soon notice how freeing this habit can be. Bonus points if you find a better home, as we've discussed, for things you don't need. When my children were growing up, uh, or not growing up, when they were little, my sister, I have two older sisters, and my sister that's six years older than me, she used to give me all of her children's clothes for my children. Um, and you know, that was like really a big help to us. And they were like brand new because when children are little, they really don't wear their clothes out too much. Um, and so when it was my turn to um, get rid of my children's clothes, clothes that I would bought and clothes that were still in really con good condition from my sisters, um, I passed them on to a friend of mine, a really close friend of mine for her children. And so they, they went far and wide and everybody, everybody could do with a ha helping hand sometimes. Adele says, lol, email, I always forget to check it. Jason says, yes, can't deal with lots of emails, inbox. And Nell says, I declutter much clothing. I mean, when you're decluttering, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, what is her name? Somebody help me out here. She's a little Japanese lady. Uh, I think she's Japanese. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway. She says that what you should do is you should start with your um, things that aren't so personal. So things like your clothes and your bathroom cabinet and things like that. And then at the end, you come to stuff like photos and, and letters and things like that. Oh, what is her name? Somebody knows her name. I think Joelle knows her name. Post it up there for me, please. Um, and what you should do is you should take Marie Kondo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joelle. Um, Marie Kondo, that's it. She is Japanese, isn't she? doesn't really matter what she is, but I've just... Anyway, um, so you, should, you take your clothes out of your wardrobe and you say, does this bring me joy? And if it doesn't bring you joy, out with it. Okay? Same with everything else in your in your house. Does this bring you joy? The other day, I had like a crystal bowl that's been in the sitting room for ages with this pot pouring that must have been sat inside that bowl for five years because I don't really, I'm not into things like that. I think it was a wedding present. And I filled it up with pot pouring probably about five years ago, maybe longer. And I just took it the other day and I thought, I'm so sick of looking at this fecking pot pourri in this bowl. And I took it out to the kitchen. I opened the bin and my daughter said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting rid of this. And she said, why? And I said, I am sick of looking at it. It served no purpose. It was boring to look at. It's been there for years. It had no smell. I don't like the smell of pot pourri. Anyway, what the heck was it doing there? Out with it. Gone. Yeah, okay, it kind of looked pretty, but after five, six years, it didn't look so pretty anymore. It was boring to look at. Okay, so the next one is um, work on a one long-term goal for an hour every day. Work on one long-term goal for an hour every day. Well, there's a challenge for me because I need to get back to my book that's been sitting inside my computer for a year. I will start to do this um, in April. I'm going to work on my long-term goal for an hour every day. I'm going to challenge myself to do that because I know so many of you have been asking me about my book. Break a major goal into 14 smaller pieces and focus on one per day for roughly an hour at each time. These baby steps will move you slowly and surely towards your aim and this is a highly effective way of turning big dreams into reality. 
Hi, Dawn. Paul says you can fill it with all the new crystals you're looking to buy in Sedona this summer. Woohoo! I can't wait. I'm so excited. We're going to go to Sedona. Hi, Diana. Hi, Tessie. Hi, Deirdre. So, work on one long term goal for an hour every day. The next one is to read a chapter of a book, a good book, every day. In my personal opinion, asking it is given. Oh, let me just get it is one of the best books you could ever buy by Esther and Jerry Hicks um, dealing with learning to manifest the law of attraction um, one of my favorite books there's so many books that you guys can buy things that you're interested in it's tempting to spend most of your reading time online but both classic books and contemporary novels have a lot, lot to offer your imagination Find a little bit of time to read a chapter per day, whether it's during your lunch break or before going to bed at night. It's a nice way to wind down. I know Jason likes to wind down with a good book, um, so you know, or a podcast. But you know, there's nothing like an actual book, really, is there? I mean, you can get books on your iPad or your whatever, your Kindle, but there's nothing the same as a book that you can go back to again and again. You can underline things that you're really interested in that have stood out to you. You can't do that on, on an iPad or a Kindle. And, you know, you can just go back to it time and time again. And I just think there's nothing like a book, a book. So the next one then is um, to spend 10 minutes of your evening reflecting on what went well that day whether you prefer 10 minutes of quiet reflection or want to write ideas down make sure you perform an inventory of the things that you enjoyed about your day suggested entries include signs of personal growth moments of human connection and beautiful things you saw i didn't know you could highlight in an ebook adele i still don't think it's the same Helen says she loves the feel of a good book. Darcy says regular books are a great way to get off screen time. Yeah, because I already spend so much time on screens, my eyes are so tired. I need to start wearing my glasses again. So don't be surprised the next time if you see me wearing my glasses, uh, which probably need to be updated. But my eyes get really tired because I spend an awful lot of time on screen. Of course, I've got lots of social media work to do. I've got workshops and academies and programs and lots of stuff, and I do coaching. So I'm continuously online, uh, much more than I would actually like to be. But um, spend 10 minutes. It's very important that we sit down and, um, you know, reflect on the things that have gone well for us that day. Tanya, what crystals should I go for and how do you know you've got the right ones? Well, Tanya, each crystal has an individual um, healing property to it. All crystals are energy and they each have different healing energies to them. And so you can look them up. For example, rose quartz would be a very good one for love, looking for love. But if you each crystal also has lots of different qualities that they will um, go towards or, or Jason Stevenson, feel free to help me out here. And Paul O'Shea. Um, yeah, I did used to own a crystal uh, shop with Paul O'Shea and I also have a crystal workshop, but it's really important that when you're choosing a crystal that you choose it, you're drawn to the energy of it. You're drawn to the feel of it, the energy of it. Uh, it's also really important that you cleanse your crystals because they will, of course, hold energies from other people that have handled them. And then it's really important to put them out into the full moonlight to re-energize them. I do go through this in detail on my crystal workshop, but basically that's what you do. And you, if you're buying online, again, choose the ones that you are drawn to. You'll usually be drawn to one instantaneously. And you know if you're not 100 percent sure come back the next day to that website and have another look if you're still drawn to it then that's the crystal for you if you're buying a crystal for somebody else set the intention that you are going to choose the right crystal for them and also you will be drawn to it for them specifically make sure they cleanse the crystal once you've given it to them unless you've put healing energy into it i'm a healer so sometimes when i'll give people crystals i can have um programmed it with healing energy and then they can wait until the next full moon to cleanse and re-energize it 
Jason Stevenson also used to sell crystals as well. And Joelle loves crystals. No problem, Pat. Thanks for joining. Hi, Nikki. Okay, so the next one is to reach out to someone every day. Again, that kind of goes back, you know, to kindness. Find someone you haven't spoken to in a while or someone you haven't, you've never really gotten to know and send them a message or strike up a conversation. Everyone has something unique to offer and these small gestures of interest can make more difference than you know. I do have my crystal ring on show. You want to see it, guys? It's really heavy. Ooh. So this is my amethyst crystal ring. Isn't it beautiful? And it is so heavy. And this, uh, you can't really see it because there's a, but that is a selenite lamp. Selenite is extremely good for healing. And I used to have that in my healing room. Um, okay, you can get all kinds of things, guys. You can get jewelry, you can get lamps. Um, get tons of stuff. Okay. Just to let you know, if you're just joining, my Soul Expansion Academy is now open since the 10th of March. Inside of that academy, there are programs which are soul-inspired and soul-driven techniques that I've put together in programs for you. Inside of the academy right now, there are two programs waiting for you to do. The first one is on scripting and the second one is on visioneering. And they are really powerful, powerful techniques and tools to help assist you with manifesting fantastic things into your life. The first 50 members will be founding members and they will receive all of my affirmations and meditations that I have done in the past um, for free to download. I've actually already written my third program, which will be going in there on the 10th of April. Hi, Lana. Beautiful. It's a beautiful amethyst. Hi, Lorraine. I don't believe you can grow your own crystals, can you? Crystals are, are, are formed deep within the earth, Tanya. Um, they're deep within the earth. People can make fake ones, I know that, but no. Um, the next one then is, oh, and by the way, I also have a mini program, the start of a series of mini programs. And that program that I have released the other week is... Um, it's called Manifesting with Clarity. Now, this is unlike any of my other programs, and it's actually in PDF format, so you can print it out. And we delve deep within to answer questions. Sometimes you might be stuck about whether you want something or you don't, and this can help you to manifest with clarity. It's only $9.99, and it's available on my website, www.expansivesouls.com. Jason said, I think most crystals take millions of years to grow. I wonder how old this one is. And like, it's just amazing. I, I'll give you another close up of it. Like, look at the little, the intricacy of the, the beauty of it. It's just so pretty. Paul says, the Academy programs are also available to purchase online, but more expensive that way. Thank you, Paul. I'd forgotten that. The link is there. Thank you, Paul. Uh, rock Candy Crystals, a.k.a. Sugar Crystals, says Adele. And Deb says you can grow rock candy, but it's not the same thing as healing crystals. Okay. We've only got a few of these left. I think we've got four left, okay, or something like that. You yeah, were on number 10. Let go of one relationship that constantly hurts you. Be honest about who really encourages you, motivates you, and makes you happy. Consider whether there are any sources of toxicity, low self-esteem, or cruelty in your life and think about how you can begin to let such a person go. 
be honest about who really encourages you, motivates you, and make you happy. Well, you know, you guys, if you've been following me for a while, you've been friends with me for a while, you know that I would tell you to get rid of toxic, negative people out of your life, even if they're family, even if they're family, yes, even if they're family. If you can't bring yourself to cut them completely, that's okay. You can take a step back. You can distance yourself. You can do all kinds of things like that. Um, just remove yourself from any negativity um, and uh, let go of a relationship that constantly hurts you. I have a family member in my life who I find very negative and so I spend minimal time with them. Hi Tim, welcome and Lehe, welcome to you over there in Scotland. Um, so be honest with yourself. Your friends should be uplifting you, supporting you, really encouraging you. Your friends should be happy for you when you're being successful. If they're not, they're not a true friend. You must really be supportive, encouraging, uplifting, and really, really happy for your friends when something in their life happens for them that they're really happy about. The next one is to repeat positive affirmations for five minutes each morning. And as I've talked about before, Abraham Hicks talks about how you shouldn't be practicing affirmations unless you are inside the vortex. And the vortex is where you've put all your hopes, dreams, wishes, and desires. It's basically your high flying disc where you are so high vibrating um, that um, you're inside your vortex. So it's like you're on a high, a drug free high, if you like. Um, and um, they talk about how we should affirm once we are in the vortex, but not outside of the vortex. We should be in that high vibratory state when we are affirming things to us. Otherwise, they don't work in the same way. Now says she has a wonderful family. That's great. Tim says to have a friend, you must be a friend. Absolutely. Adele says, I work with a lot of negative students, but with a lot of love and kindness, I hope they will see the light someday. Keep raising your vibration. Keep raising your vibration. And of course, Paul says, if you can't cut them, focus on the positive aspects of the person, can it improve the relationship or so, Ali tells me. I've done it before. I've written positive aspects about somebody and... Um, it completely changed them within less than a week. Michael says, I agree with you about removing toxic people from our lives. I had to unfriend someone who was making negative comments about men in front of me. Very nice. How do you do what, Darcy? How do you do what? Okay, the next one is... Do something you're scared of. Everything you want is on the other side of fear, guys. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. So do something that you're scared of. Try to get rid of one limiting belief that induces fear and holds you back from being fulfilled. Um, before I talk about this, and I've talked about it lately, it's that, you know, before I started doing lives a year and a half to two years ago, I did not want to do live videos. No way in hell did I want to appear in front of a bunch of random strangers talking to a camera, which felt to me like talking to myself. I didn't feel that I was worthy, which was a limiting self-belief, even though in real life I felt worthy, I felt confident, but I obviously had... Um, some kind of subconscious limiting belief about how I felt about this. And so I was pushed to do it because I knew that I wanted to get my message out further. I knew that I was capable and I went and I did it. And look where I am today. That little girl from Bray, Ireland, well, I'm actually from Dublin, who's hosting a retreat that was booked out within six weeks with her friend Vivian Cardin, who's hosting a workshop in Las Vegas, Nevada in July with Tony Doyle. 
I mean, the list goes on and on. I've got my own academy. I've got my own tribe. I've got lots of groups, spiritual groups, amazing friends, 5,000 friends on Facebook. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, and from doing that, I've inspired thousands of people all over the world. And it, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here today. And you wouldn't be here today. And lots of people's lives wouldn't be the same. So what I'm saying to you about that is take the step. Do something that you're scared of. Do something that you fear. Make sure it's something that you know is going to propel you to something else. But do something. Face the fear and do it anyway. If I can do it, you can do it. Perhaps you have mistaken underlying assumptions about your intelligence, your talent, or your attractiveness, or what you deserve. We all deserve everything. We're all worthy of everything. Each and every one of you is worthy worthy of whatever it is you want to do for you, worthy of whatever it is you want to bring to the world, whatever it is you want to speak to the world. What do you want to tell the world? How will you serve the world? How do you want to show up? Whatever it is, face the fear. Face the fear and do it. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. The last one. Thank you, Tanya. Thanks now. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Face the fear and do it anyway. Exactly. The last one is to practice self-care every day for 15 minutes. Practice self-care every day for 15 minutes. Spend 15 minutes a day being kind to yourself. Do yoga. Take a bath. Say no to something that would drain your resources or buy yourself a small treat. So there's some tips from the law of attraction and there is um, some uh, a challenge for you guys to do um, 14 days of growth that will help you to vibrate to a higher frequency and bring you closer to living your best life. So I hope you've all enjoyed that. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. You've been absolutely amazing. Hi, Scott. How do you get into the vortex? You get into the vortex by lots of different ways, but a couple of the main ways are to meditate every single day. Meditate, connect with your inner being, your higher self, God, the source, the universe. Quiet your mind each and every day. Do things to raise your vibration. For everybody, it's different. But the most common ones are to burn some sage, light some candles, listen to music, go out into nature, meditate, hug a tree, ground yourself on the grass barefoot. Um, dance around the sitting room like a twat, um, cook if you like cooking. For me, that would lower my vibration, but some people love cooking. Um, bake if you like baking, crochet if you like crocheting, knit if you like knitting, read a book if you like to read a book. Do things that are going to raise your vibration. You're the only one who knows the things that are going to raise your vibration. Spending time with loved ones, petting your animals, all of these kinds of things can help to raise your vibration. Burning incense. You're welcome, Heather. You're welcome, Peggy. You're welcome, Susan. Hey, Scott Lee OC. So that is it for this evening. If you feel so inspired, please check out my Soul Expansion Academy. It's at www.expansivesouls.com. Um, and that is where my new programs are. Very affordable for everyone. Don't forget that there is also a really super, super affordable um, 
new mini program on my website called Manifesting with Clarity. It's only $9.95. Check out my website. There is also an amazing social media platform on my website. If you go in and deal with it, you just put up your photo and you can follow each other. It can be such a great thing. So make sure you check it out. Much love to you, Jason. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have an amazing day ahead. And Nell, thank you so much for that. So I'm sending love from my heart to yours as always, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I have been Ali O'Shea. Namaste and good evening from Ireland. Thank you, guys.